some friction has been created as yes. a result of the manner in which uh, government has chosen to go about this. Yes. Looking at the MBA, for instance, they yes. don't seem to be uh, on the same wavelength with uh, members of the uh, uh, anti-corruption uh, committee. Okay, look, always fighting corruption is never a popular thing. Nowhere in the world. Nowhere in the world. Because entrenched interest would always try to resist. So this should be expected. Secondly, fighting corruption, there is hardly ever unanimity in approach. Okay? Thirdly, oftentimes, it happens that those who have taken advantage, oftentimes, I say, tend to be in control. Either of institutions, okay? Either of associations, either having dominant power. You heard the acting president talking about media war. How many people can afford to pay for a huge media war? Okay, so it is the reality. It is to be expected. But the good thing is that there is unanimity that we must deal with corruption. The, div the, the, the difference is how do we deal with corruption? In the process of answering that question, sorry to interrupt you, uh, you have made further allegations. You don't think that what you're saying is that... Like what sort of allegations? You, you say something about uh, those in institutions of course. Are, uh, have entrenched interests. Of course, of course. Now, let me ask you a question. Mm. If something is going on wrong, say in channels, and everybody knows it's going on, but it's not changing, who do you blame? You blame the leadership. You focus on the leadership. Mm. You expect corrective measure to come. And the people who are supposed to do if they do not take those corrective measures what do you say you begin to say look you are in a position to take corrective measures this wouldn't be happening but for the fact that president buari from the top what people call political will has said i am going to fight corruption and the reason i ask you i mean I, i'm bringing that to the fore is because if you say that there is unanimity in in Everyone's saying that we should fight corruption. It yes. means that even the MBA and everybody else is yes. saying we should fight corruption. They are saying so. Are, are you not also looking at the fact that perhaps the anti-corruption committee is not very open to criticism? No, 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 no. We're very open to criticism. By the way, we don't even implement anything. We just think through. And in thinking through, you have to talk to people. You have to engage. You have to consult. You have to hear them. The difference is in how. I'll tell you the truth. The truth is that Everybody agrees that corruption has diminished Nigeria and brought us down. But, you see, nobody wants to go to jail. They say, okay, uh, uh, it's systemic corruption, everybody's doing it. So they want it to stop, but they don't want you to ask questions about what brought us to where we are. You are looking at IDPs just as I came in. The question of IDPs and all of those challenges was foiled by corruption. Heavily foiled by corruption. We will not be here but for that. Now, people would like to say, oh, this is bad. But they don't want those who are responsible to go to jail. That's a big difference. And we're saying there should be accountability. There must be sanction and enforcement. Beyond recovering their assets, there should be sanction and enforcement. Otherwise, how do you discourage other people from doing it? So that's a huge point of departure. That's a, and you cannot pick people and just throw them in jail. You have to go through a process. Okay? So that's the point of departure. So... When you hear the legislature, the executive, the judiciary, everybody abhors corruption. Nobody has come out to say, this is good. Everybody has said it is bad. We admit that it's a problem. We are going to try and deal with it. But the question is, how do we deal with it? That's the issue. Now, you also have to benchmark that against what is the expectation of the public. What is the expectation of the media? What is the expectation of the ordinary person? I, I give you one expectation. In one instance, I mean, I recall the last year when the homes of judges were raided. People kept on saying, well, we all know that the judiciary is very sensitive, but, we, you know, do, but we've talked about corruption in the judiciary so many times that we know that it's not particularly clean. Uh, but people were hoping that when eventually the raid was carried out, that this was as a result of some thorough investigation that has gone on, and perhaps we will see uh, immediate and you know, speedy prosecution, watertight cases. But that's not what we've seen. Okay. First of all, take note that investigations take time. Even when it appears that your hand has been found in the cookie jar. On the one hand, part of the criticism of the courts and even lawyers has been that the anti-corruption agencies do shoddy investigation. They are not thorough. They rush to court. That expression. We've heard it many times. And we've said... You don't have to rush to court. Now, Diazani Alison Madweke was arrested in 2015 in England. She's not been taken to court yet. Two years. Investigations are going on. Now, so here we have a situation in which people want uh, suspects to be taken to court tomorrow. And then they want conviction or the case to end next tomorrow. The process doesn't run like that. You see, the, the, the process is designed 
in a way to give everybody a fair chance. Now, part of our own concern is that we want everybody who is a role player in that system to keep to their track, especially for the courts to enforce the rules and enforce it fairly against both sides. Follow the rules. If the rules say you cannot have an adjournment more than X number of days, follow it. If the rules say you cannot have more than X number of adjournments, follow it. The government is not insisting that those who get arrested must be thrown into jail. The prosecution must prove the case. If you don't prove the case, then you don't go to jail. So now, here we are in a dilemma whereby people say, oh, why haven't you rushed, gone to court? But at the same time, they say, oh, you are losing because your investigation was shoddy. You see? So there has to be a balance. So that's the dilemma and the problem. And, the situation, and it has to be understood. When we say that, you know, the, the person, the suspect is innocent until proven guilty, when we see the homes of judges, who are supposed to be respectable people in society, being raided, don't we already remove that caveat of innocent until proven guilty? No, 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 you don't. First of all, you should understand that the law applies equally to everybody. It applies equally to everybody. Now, there will be divided opinion about the approach and the manner in which investigation is carried out. Even then, investigation must be carried out in accordance also with the law. Mm -hmm. Then, prosecution must be carried out. So, the question you should ask is, was the investigation carried out in accordance with the law? Now, even if you find some evidence, the suspect may have a defense, okay, that is tenable and acceptable before the courts. So, you've got to provide that chance. So, the fact that you found the money or found any other thing, you still have to prove your case. And in criminal cases, it is proof beyond reasonable doubt. You've got to remove every out of doubt that there is guilt on the other side. So it's a huge burden. Now, some people have argued that countries that have made progress have shifted the burden of proof by saying, okay, the prosecution does not have to prove anything. All they have to say is, we came to your house, we found $10 million cash. Please, you tell us how you got it, and what it's meant for. We rest our case. Now, until we shift the burden of proof, and right now we have not done so, okay? So we have to understand the context in which this is going on. And so all of these tensions and these concerns, they are to be expected, okay? Of course, we understand that those who don't play within the criminal justice system will be anxious, it's the majority of the public, to say what is going on. People will expect quick wins. I, we recognize that there's a huge appetite from the public for casualties, for the body count. Because they said, we know there's systemic corruption, that every sector is affected. And when you get people, you say, what are they doing? Throw them in jail. But it doesn't work that way, unfortunately. We've got to go, because today is one person, tomorrow could be another person. So we've got to follow the rules for the sake of everybody. That's what is all about rule of law. Now, if ultimately outcomes that emerge defeat the expectation of the public, those outcomes are not supported by the facts and the evidence, and we have nothing to do about it, then what do you do? The public will assess and judge and say, this process has not gone the way that it ought to. We will all face the consequences ultimately. But what needs to be understood is that we have no choice but to follow the rules. And the government is determined to follow those rules. But you need more people on your side. I mean, we need more people on the side. If you say that there Define is... Define more you, people. You, you, when you say that there is unanimity in, mm. you know, people saying that we agree that corruption needs to be fought, yeah. but we are not quite comfortable in the manner in which government is going about it. Mark, when you are listening to the vocal minority, vocal influential minority, the majority of the people out there abhor corruption, support the government. You are looking at people who have resources. You are looking at few people who have resources, few people who have influence, few people who have opportunity. You cannot take their voice as the voice of the majority. So the majority support the anti-corruption crusade. But if you, and it's the same everywhere else. So if you listen to somebody who has capacity, okay, to influence the information that goes out, to influence opinion makers, okay, to influence people who control, for example, the media, all right? If you take their view as the view of the majority, then you're wrong. You realize that this is also political. I mean, when an administration comes in and says that we're going to fight corruption and they get, you know, more than half the population, who, voting population to, you know, vote for them and another huge 
um, you cannot actually term them a minority because if they're more than, if, if we're looking at, say, if we divide it into four and maybe you get, um, or should we say eight now, maybe you get five of that,